In the Hot Tone Club, Senpai had been known to act inappropriately towards the opponents of his heart's desire during a match. This sparked a furor. This was despite the fact that the principal at the time, Kude stopped to the proposal to abolish the society. Instead, he asked students to win the next competition to maintain the reputation of the club. After a year, the vice president rises to power, and the Hot Tune Club is once again in crisis. To protect the club, Gun takes his friend's advice and decides to run for student president. However, his opponent is Tim, the school bully of the same class, who is not only handsome and dashing, but also the son of the principal. In the election campaign, Gun loses the election without any doubt. Shortly afterward, the school administration asked him to give a speech announcing that they were abolishing the Hot Tunes Club in order to fight for the rights of the association. Gun openly challenges Tim. He also promised to win the game in regulation. Despite verbalizing the abolition of the society, Tim has long had a crush on Gun. Gun is worried when Tim reaches out to him. Despite providing information about the match, he also took the opportunity to get closer and left in style after achieving his goal. In order to compete, Gun and the team rehearse off campus, only to be asked by Tim to submit an application. In an attempt to silence Tim, Gun leads the group in a performance under the school uniforms, which attracts the audience's attention. However, during the singing, local guards show up and try to make an arrest. Eventually, Gun's mother arrives in person and manages to save the crowd. In an effort to get an extension on the competition, Gun pleads with the not so close Tim in gym class. However, Tim immediately sees through Gun's true purpose in approaching him. He decisively refused Gun's request. He advises Gun that it would be best to follow his own advice and enter a competition that he recommends. After much deliberation, Gun, in order to live up to the expectations of his seniors, who had handed over the club to them, eventually he decides to take part in the competition offered by Tim. When they arrive at the scene, however, the crowd is surprised to find Tim pressed, and he's judging the competition in place of his mother. Before the match, Gun goes to worship the Buddha and Tim follows suit and kneels. He led Gun in prayer. He remains strong-armed in spite of his mouth and expresses his hope that Gun and the others won't let him down. Soon Gun's band had their turn on stage. As this was a local folkloric show, they wore relaxed and casual costumes before the start of the song. However, Tim deliberately makes things difficult for them. Nonetheless, Gun and his team quickly calm down, and they completely overwhelm the audience through their wonderful performance. When the contest goes to the judges to give points, Gun had thought Tim as a judge would give them a chance to win. However, to Gun's surprise, it was in the process of offering flowers to give points. Tim went so far as to give the wreath to someone else right in front of him. This left Gun feeling that the band's efforts had ultimately come to naught. A look of disappointment and frustration crossed his face. However, in the end, Gun and L were victorious on the day. He retained his club status for the time being at the school award ceremony. Just as he's ecstatic, he doesn't realize it's all Tim's doing. Whether it's judging a contest or changing the points rules, Tim has long been quietly working hard for the one who made him fall deeply in love. Tim had developed a crush on Gun two years earlier, during which time he had tried to confess his love several times, but he ends up failing every time. Look at graduation coming up. In order not to leave Tim with any regrets, his friend encouraged him to make another effort. Who would have thought that the biggest obstacle in his path to love would come from his mother? Gun becomes hostile to Tim because his mother is trying to shut down the Hot Tune Club in every way possible. For the sake of his beloved Tim in the end, he had to choose to run for student president. He hopes to help Gun by taking on this position. They were originally thought to have helped the Hot Tunes win the folk music competition. This can't keep the association alive. Surprisingly, however, they had to mortgage and sell off the instruments of the Hot Tune Club to pay the damages claimed by the other party in the previous dispute. As on the subject, it upset her mother at the dinner table. Tim can only decide to find other ways to help Gun. Gun is unable to practice because he has lost his instrument and has no choice but to find Tim. He got down on his knees in a low voice and asked for forgiveness, hoping that Tim would utilize his authority. He would like to see if he can get the school to return the instruments so they can continue to practice as a team. Because of this, Tim enjoyed a small, happy and cousy time. During this time, Tim has worked very hard for hot tones. He carefully audited the expenses of funds, large and small, within the school. He hopes to be able to use these funds to fill the financial gap in the hot tone society. Yet fate seemed to be against him. It was at this time that the pipe club was offered the opportunity to compete abroad and needed financial support. Due to this unforeseen circumstance, Tim is unable to fulfill the conditions he previously promised Gunn. This leads Gunn to believe that he's gone back on his word and doesn't want to help at all. So Gunn felt very angry and didn't want to pay any attention to him. On this day, Tim came to his dad for help with the band. I didn't expect to accidentally discover dad's former interest in playing in a band. He also took over from his dad and helped keep his dad's expensive guitars. Once he gets others available, 
Tim immediately starts playing the role of the Finn. Tim got in touch with Gunn and asked him to pick up unwanted trash at the student union. In this way, Gunn and Al managed to get a free guitar for a limited period of time. In addition to guitars, other instruments were being contacted and collected by Tim's running around. He informed Gunn and others of the location of the various vocal instruments, completely unaware of Gunn. Even after collecting most of the instruments, he gleefully came to show off to Tim, and he was completely unaware that the man in front of him was none other than their band's greatest helper. Seeing that all the instruments were collected, only the last drum set was missing, so Tim requested a bar that was closing. He asked Gunn's band to do the closing act. This performance, however, was fueled by the enthusiasm of the guests in attendance. It also exceeded the originally planned to hours of singing time. Gunn is also exhausted from singing so hard. When Gunn looks like he's about to lose his hold, Tim, observing from a distance, volunteered to come on stage and help him save the day. He sang a love song that had once been sung to Gunn in an ice store when he was at his loneliest. In the end, Gunn and his team managed to pull off the show. In addition to receiving a free drum set, they were also paid handsomely. After the show, Gunn curiously asks Tim why he's helping them. Tim replied that as student president, it was his responsibility to help any student in need. Actually, Tim got a tip from the store manager. The members of the Hot Tune Club follow an unwritten rule. That's the only way to get into a relationship is to enter a competition and win an award. So he started a romance with Gunn in order to be able to do so. Tim is determined to help Gunn and others win the Hot Tunes competition. <laughs> Gunn came forward to seek Tim's help because Tim had previously promised to support the band. They need signatures from faculty and staff on campus to enter the contest. The biggest challenge facing the orchestra right now is undoubtedly the principal. After pleas from his son and Gunn and others, the principal agreed to sign in support. However, he then offered a condition in exchange. He asked Gunn and other underachievers to earn passing grades in every subject on the midterm exams. Gunn had originally planned to use the secret martial arts techniques passed down from his predecessors to save everyone. However, the books were infested with termites due to their poor hiding place. This led Gunn and others to look for other solutions. Tim realizes that Gunn needs help and decides to contact him on his trumpet. Tim told him to come to himself for assistance, yet Gunn's ability to learn surprised Tim and even exceeded his expectations. To facilitate Tim and Gunn's romance, Tim's best friend suggests that Tim mentor the other band members. This then creates a week of intensive training for Tim and Gunn. By sharing food, lodging and tutoring time, they can incidentally increase their goodwill towards each other. However, since Tim has never spent a night out, when he asked his parents, his mother immediately rejected him. Seeing that Tim's cohabitation plans are about to fall apart, Tim's father decides to help him. He said he could use the time when Tim was out and away, and the couple enjoy their time together. First day of cohabitation, Tim was in an irritable mood because of Gunn's frequent approaches and almost delayed business. Luckily, his best friend reminds Tim ahead of time that he can let his guard down with Gunn. He has to strictly teach and supervise Gunn to pass the exam before he can participate in the competition. This forced Tim to face Gunn seriously for the greater good. When it's time to go to bed for the night, Tim lets Gunn sleep in his bed and chooses to hit the floor himself. It occurred to Gunn that since Tim had been taught the subject matter, then you should also get Tim to partner with you in the social dance that you have to take in gym class. So he got up and pulled Tim, hoping to practice together. Tim, however, is afraid to look Gunn in the eye and uses sleepiness as an excuse to escape. Tim was also concerned about this afterward. He's worried that he's partnered with Gunn and that he'll flunk Gunn because he's striking him down. After listening to that, he points out that Tim is there because he has too little contact with Gunn. He then suggested that Tim spend more time with Gunn. While he still had a few days left, they asked Tim to communicate with him to get to know each other better. Easier said than done. As much as Tim longs to attract Gunn's attention, they exist only in his fantasies. Virtually every time he tried to take action, Gunn always got his attention in turn. Even at lunchtime, when Gunn sees that Tim can't chop vegetables, he can't stand the sigh of the bogeyman, so he told Tim to stand away and not get in the way. Finally, the day of the exam, when and the others completed their papers and handed in their question cards quickly because of his tuition, Gunn was the only one, however, who Saturday inside the classroom for a long time, which made Tim a little worried. Fortunately, in the end, Gunn also turned in his question card and walked out of the classroom. It turns out that the only reason it took him so long to do it was because he was doing the math and thinking about it over and over too quickly. After finishing the exam, he even hugged Tim out of joy. The sudden surprise mesmerized Tim. There's only one last day left of the exam. Two teenagers at the pool, talking about their dreams and lives. The next thing Tim was most worried about was the social dance, which they had planned to practice poolside. However, 
their practice had to be terminated when security guards came to persuade them to leave as the time for using the venue had expired. On the last night, Gunn sees Tim preparing to continue sleeping on the floor, so Gunn extends an invitation for him to join him in bed and sleep in peace. At bedtime, Tim, wanting to get over his mental block of seeing eye to eye, asks Gunn to make eye contact with him. However, it wasn't long before Gunn said he was getting a little sleepy and turned to go to bed. During the next day's exam class, when Gunn comes to drag Tim to the exam room, Tim was going to turn him down, but Gunn ignored his objections and forced him onto the stage. After the music starts, when Tim opens his eyes again, he realizes that he and Gunn are the only two left on stage dancing together. While members of the orchestra accompanied and sang along, Tim kept his weight on the balls of his feet and moved forward to the music. Gunn was close behind, sometimes confident and sometimes shy. The two ended up winning a huge round of applause from their teachers and the students in attendance at the end of the song. They successfully completed the subject. The members of the orchestra succeeded in fulfilling the principal's request. They had the principal heartily playing and signing for the crowd. Gunn expressed his gratitude to Tim after successfully obtaining the principal's signature. What Tim doesn't realize, however, is that Gunn had already had a quiet heart attack the moment he locked eyes with him last night after receiving approval from the principal. The orchestra began preparing for the upcoming music competition. However, due to the overall low quality of the orchestra, after some discussion, the group decided to look for a solo guitarist to join the team at Gunn's suggestion. While everyone is actively thinking about finding new members, Sound, a new transfer student in Gunn's class, manages to get the attention of a small group. Surprisingly, however, Sound turned out to be a competitor to Tin. As soon as the two met, there was an air of tension and competition. Gunn and the others set up an ambush when Sound goes to the bathroom. What they didn't realize, however, was that Sound was no slouch. He quickly overpowered the members of the group, forcing everyone to rush out of the restroom to make their intentions known. When he hears Gunn's request that he wants him to join the band, the high-minded Sound refused without hesitation. He also disparaged the playing ability of Gunn's group. Since the new member declined the invitation, Gunn had to post flyers around campus looking for like-minded guitarists. Seeing that his future goals were facing difficulties, Tim naturally couldn't just stand by when he saw it, despite his poor relationship with Sound. Still, on the advice of his best friend, he decides to find Sound and ask for his help, who knew Tim hadn't even had a chance to speak. Sound then reaches out and provocatively offers to join the music club. It turns out Sound has heard some whispers that there is a conflict between the student council and the music club. This makes Sound determined to thwart the student council. He wants Tim to join the music club by losing to him. <laughs> Sound after joining the club, he soon discovered that Gunn's band had a problem with indulging in entertainment and eclectic in practice. He was exasperated by this and decided to use his own level of musicianship to prove himself, to silence the skepticism of the crowd. Sound also said that as the leader of the club, Gunn needs to give way to someone more capable. This incident makes Gunn realize his inadequacy and eventually decides to quit the club. The learns that Gunn has left the club and immediately helps Tim pursue the man he likes. He directly invites Gunn to help. They asked him and Tim to patrol the vendors at the club fair event after school. With a new officers on the job, Sound's behavior is starting to raise the hackles of the band members as well. However, due to Sound's oppressive rule and Gunn's will before he left, the members of the group had no choice but to endure. On the other hand, Gunn participates in many club activities in the company of Tim. Since Tim gave him the right to give his opinion, he transformed the student government office, which was boring and alienating to students, into the Deacon's Cafe. On the day of the event, the student union was filled to capacity and was very rewarding. Gunn experienced stage life again. After a long time as a resident singer at a cafe, he expressed his gratitude to Tim between breaks and meals. He promised to attend all future music-related events at the student union. After a break, Gunn returned to his residency at the student union. However, he unexpectedly encounters a group of oppressed corps members. They pleaded with him to go back. This is despite Gunn having quit the club and the fact that the music club is about to start. But he was caught in a dilemma. Eventually, he decided to call the group back to the club. While he stayed behind to finish this side of the job, Tim couldn't bear to see Gunn lose his smile. So after the group leaves, he suggests that Gunn go back to the music club. He tells Gunn he's done his part. He said sound was not the right person to be the administrator. He wants Gunn to go back and revitalize the band. After getting encouragement from Tim, Gunn eventually braved the chorus members, with whom they had practiced for long hours. Not only did he regain control from Sound, he also invited Sound to join him on stage. After the event, the most awaited barbecue session was held as scheduled. Gunn hadn't forgotten about Tim, and he quickly darted to the student union. Then Gunn suggested that he and the student president hadn't taken a picture for a photo yet. After saying that, 
He pulled Tim along with him to the president's table and raised his cell phone to take a selfie. During the group photo, Tim carefully took Gunn's pinky, and instead of refusing, Gunn held Tim's hand tightly. The ambiguous atmosphere between the two quickly heated up. Due to the upcoming promotion exams, after the seniors questioned everyone about their aspirations, they were confused about the future. When Head Gunn advised to a music competition, the members are hesitant. In the end, Head Gunn reluctantly said he would give everyone until the end of the month to think about whether they still wanted to compete. As a result, Gunn is once again left alone. Luckily, this time he still had Tim around to give him support. Even more comforting, at Tim's invitation, the two come together after school to Gunn's family ice store. However, unexpectedly Gunn's mother suffers from low blood sugar and collapses during the process. Although the mother regained consciousness after a short break, but Gunn, who cares for his mother, decides to let her rest a little longer, so he offered to help open the business. Next to him, Tim certainly didn't forget to impress his future mother-in-law, and so it was that the young couple ran an eye store together. Sometimes Gunn feels a little uneasy when he sees guests get into close to Tim. He would even go up to Tim and remind him to keep his distance. The next day at school, Tim visits Gunn at his house because of his unexcused absence. When he asks, he realizes that Gunn didn't go to school, so that his mother could get one more day of rest. However, the experience shook Gunn's face, and he began to consider giving up music competitions. Gunn's words confused Tim, who has always supported him in pursuing his musical dreams. His absent-mindedness at the student council meeting was detected by his best friend on the sidelines, so Tim decides to find a way to help Gunn get back on his feet. Tim found an acting company that auditions singers for auditions. It tells Gunn about the audition and encourages him to sign up. In the days that followed, Tim accompanied Gunn wholeheartedly in his training. Tim has worked hard for Tim's success when decided to enter a rap competition on a win. Par, on the other hand, got after school tutoring from a tutor as arranged by her mother. At an appointment, Por surprisingly meets the, who is tutoring with the same teacher. After the appointment, to learn it of Por's situation while talking to him, he then advised Por if he didn't want to tutor but wanted to compete, he could go home and find time to have a good talk with his mother. He also encouraged Por that there are some things you miss out on and don't get a chance to do. The hopes he won't regret the choice he made. Despite numerous training sessions, Gunn failed to make the cut at the end of the draft. The loss has dealt a serious blow to Gunn's confidence. On his way home, he was almost hit because he wasn't paying attention to the road. Luckily Tim pulled him aside in time, at which point Gunn couldn't help but shed a tear. Tim takes Gunn back to his house. Before leaving, Gunn's mother inquired about them. She also learns about Gunn losing the election. This allows Gunn's mother to hear his thoughts as she packs up the store. Gunn wants to change his career to study in the Department of Management. His mom encourages Gunn not to give up on his first love of singing and to keep chasing his dream. Eventually Gunn revived his dream again and decided to give it his all again. The other members are eager to return to him, so they reunited within the community and hugged each other tightly. They decide to work together to enter a music competition. Tim always cared for Gunn and never let up until the very end. When Gunn needs to find a place on campus where he can connect to the internet, Tim didn't hesitate to lead him there. Before the last few minutes, Tim helped Gunn successfully upload the information for the music contest entry form. Gunn was full of joy and expressed his thanks to Tim. He then curiously asked him why he was so generous in helping his club. Tim takes this opportunity to reveal his feelings to Gunn. He stated that the person he had his heart set on was in their club. However, did Gunn succeed in understanding the meaning of Tim's remark? Unfortunately, Gunn fails to learn who Tim really likes. The conversation was forced to break down because of a sudden call from Tim's mom. The incident haunted Gunn afterward, so much so that he decided to call Tim after tossing and turning in bed at night. When he asked, however, he heard Tim's seemingly hesitant tone. He immediately realized that things might not be as he thought and backed away in fear. The next day, the band had to make a music video for the preliminary rounds and drew the song of course choice in the lottery. As the crowd agonized over what to make, Tim and his buddy Big Helper volunteered their hair and were willing to help before Gunn Khan nod his head. However, he's pulled away by Tim's nemesis, Sound. Sound had originally planned to do the choreography for the music video on his own. However, there were many disagreements between Wynn and him and the regiment, leading to a heated argument between the two. In this case, Gunn had to seek the intervention of the student government to resolve the issue. To help Tim, they designed a mental quiz paper. He wanted the opportunity to shoot a music video. He wants to use this to get Tim and Gunn to grow attached over the course of the ka. As they would expect, the paper successfully prompted the two to keep testing each other in a question and answer session. In the process, Tim even gets shy because he can't resist Gunn's questions. He covered his face with a test paper. With this arrangement, the others started to prepare for the music video shoot. Fan and poor intern at the noodle shop in the cafeteria. 
they accidentally concocted a delicious recipe that led to a boom in business for the noodle shop. Sound and Wayne are scheduled to practice playing badminton, but because Sound didn't put skill points into his athletic program, he looked awkward during practice, combined with Wayne's lack of patience in teaching. Another love it or hate it scenario occurs between the two. In the evening, Tim and Gunn continued to discuss the questionnaire test questions. This time their conversation turned to life lessons. Khan tells Gunn about the death of his father when he was a young boy, and he can help but choke up at the end. Tim hugged him heartily and offered him comfort. On the day of the music video shoot, as Fat was accidentally injured while selling noodles, so the Win and Sun part of the program started shooting first. However, as soon as filming began, Win had multiple NGS over scripted intimate scenes. Finally, in order to finish the shoot as quickly as possible, Sound volunteered to come forward to complete the intimate scene. His professionalism and dedication amazed everyone in the room. At the end of the shoot, Tim and Gunn strolled home together under an umbrella. They went on to try to solve the last question in the paper. During the stare down, Gunn can help but asked him who he said he liked earlier. Tim gazed at Gunn, then stated that he should know exactly who he was talking about. However, Gunn's answer after hearing this is that the rules of the organization prohibit relationships. He wants to remain friends with Tim for now. The answer left Tim feeling heartbroken. When he got home, he immediately caught the crying for comfort and support. The next day, when the two started shooting the music video, Gunn began to constantly add to his repertoire interacting intimately with Tim. This upset him, who had just received his friend's card not long ago. He couldn't help but push Gunn away disgruntled. Friends shouldn't be like this. With that he turned and left, leaving everyone but Gunn staring at each other in disbelief. Later, Gunn finds Tim, who is sitting in meditation by the pool. In addition to apologizing to Tim, he didn't want to restrain his fondness for Tim any longer. He decides to confess to Tim. When Tim learns that they to like each other, they get even closer. Gunn even stated that the rules of the music club do not prohibit outsiders from pursuing it. So book a spot with Gunn to accompany Tim after the music competition. The music video was finally edited a week later, sponsored by Golden Master Fast Food. The group headed to the store to sample the food, and the two and the ambiguous pair showed their affection for each other unabashedly. It was as if nothing around them existed. After confessing his love for Gunn, Tim never stops confessing his deep love for Gunn. Whenever the flag is raised at the assemblies, he invites a group of people to run with him at the bottom. He's only there to see Gunn a few more times. While helping Gunn with his physics tutoring, he's even able to spell out mushy love words using the table of elements. Even more touching, at lunchtime, it would also buy off the cafeteria lady and spell out the shape of a love heart with shrimp. It also made Gunn's heart sing all day long. During the drama grouping, Gunn skipped class due to his absence. Tim had to pull him into the same group. Best friend, they even cleverly chose the Romeo and Juliet script to make the two the leads. He wanted the duo to cultivate their relationship and made a point of arranging for the crowd to leave. He leaves Tim and Gunn alone in a room, beautifully practicing their lines. In reality, he was trying to create an opportunity for Tim to ask Gunn for an off-campus date. Originally Gunn planned to get free tickets to the aquarium from Poor to be the location of their first date. However, he was on his way to invite Tim. He saw Tim accept a cake treat from a strange woman. Jealousy causes Gunn to angrily crumple the ticket into a ball and turn away. Gunn was rehearsing the play. He plays the philandering scumbag by deliberately not following the scripted lines because he's jealous. Tim didn't understand what he had done wrong and took advantage of the opening to go up and ask. This question reveals the reason for Gunn's anger. He hastily pulled out the cake and the paper on it to show his innocence. It turns out that the other party had completely misidentified the subject. The misunderstanding was later cleared up. It turns out that the person that Burl wanted to deliver the snacks to was actually Ben Membrio, but due to the club's rule against relationships and Yo's lack of confidence in himself. So on the dating app, she went so far as to use Tim's picture, despite the members' desire to fall in love, but the rules of the association could not be repealed by the will of Gunn alone, so he called all the members for advice, surprisingly. However, guitarist Win was adamantly opposed, and poor next to him chimed in that he was not in a relationship. It allows everyone to focus more on the rest of the game, and there's nothing wrong with that. Because of this, Yo's love ended before it even began. In order to explain things clearly to the girl, Yo asks the girl out to meet him, accompanied by Gun and Tim. He hopes to find opportunities to be honest with the girls during their shared excursions. He wanted to gain forgiveness from the other side in this way, and the reason why Wen is against community members falling in love. Later, while practicing in a drama group, he is informed by Sound and others. Turns out it's because Wen himself has been single so far and can't see anyone else in a relationship, despite the fact that there were multiple people traveling together. Gunn and Tim were both dressed very appropriately. 
Jim also continued to take pictures of Gunn throughout the trip, showing a total obsession. In the middle of their play, the two are suddenly interrupted by Yo's request. They then remembered the main purpose of the outing, so they skillfully arranged for the girl's friends to leave so that they could have another chance to talk to the girl alone. When the girl's friend falls asleep from exhaustion, the two continue their date. It was as if there was no one around them. They even showed hand-biting behavior during feeding. Yo's relationship with the girl begins with deception. This led to a confession, a slap in the face from the girl, and an eventual upset. Since then Yo has been depressed due to a breakup, causing the band members to look away. They vote again on whether or not Yo will be allowed to pursue love. This time they unanimously approved, allowing Yo the right to pursue love. With everyone's approval, Yo organizes a singing and dancing team at Gunn's suggestion. He traveled to the girl's house with great vigor to seek reconciliation. The original plan was that Yo and the girls had come to an agreement and decided to start over. Surprisingly, however, the girl's brother is a club senior, so Yo's love affair suffers another setback and he has to wait until he wins a music competition. After what happened with Yo, the social rule of no relationships is still strictly enforced. However, that didn't stop Gun and Tim from wanting to be close to each other. Gun even said so bluntly, although you can't be in a relationship, there's no rule that you can talk about ambiguous topics. The game is about to start. However, Gun and the others are at team practice. Instead, they exceeded the time limit set by the school, which upset him. In the evening, he called Tim and invited to come along. The news sent ripples through Tim's mind. So Tim skillfully used the excuse of a student council member's outing and managed to get his mother's consent. He sees this trip to the beach as his and Gunn's honeymoon. On the day of the trip, Sand, who was in the same group, brought the along with him as soon as he saw Tim. He then put on a displeased expression, even before getting in the car. It was obvious to Gunn that there seemed to be something going on between Sound and Wynn. However, since Wynn doesn't know what happened either, Gunn then dismissed the matter as a petty personal vendetta between the two men. After driving to the beach, the group enjoyed a fun time together by taking a dip in the water. Tim also seizes the opportunity to relax with Gunn alone on the beach. However, their alone time was not long. The members of the orchestra approached to express their intention to go together to a very spiritual temple nearby to worship. Who would have thought that this otherwise fun-filled visit to the attraction? It is, however, rendered tasteless by the presence of its former president. Yet, Yak's presence puts a damper on all the entertainment that had been planned and all the members except Tim and they have to attend Yak's devilish training. This bothers Tim a lot because he thinks it will ruin his date with Gunn, and Yak's ridiculous training programs exhaust the crowd. Due to the need to use original music for the finals, Yank decided that Sound and Gunn within the band would be responsible for writing the songs, while others continued with instrumental practice and physical training. For Gunn, who is scheduled to write a song for the first time, he spoke with Sound about how to get started creating. As a result, Sound suggested that Gunn try to write a love song. Sound then reveals that he has a crush on Wynn from the group, which surprises Gunn. In hindsight, Gunn worries that if Sound confesses to Wynn, the worst that could happen is that the band breaks up. However, Gunn seems to be a little too worried, as he overestimates Wynn's intelligence level. After Sound gets advice from Yak, he takes his songwriting to Wynn for review. Didn't realize Wynn was watching it, he went so far as to mock Sound for writing a song that matched his temperament. This upset Sound, who turns away, thwarted on Wynn's side. Sound runs off to see the ocean alone to settle his mood. A heartbroken gun walks up to comfort Sound and offers to tell Sound. He and Tim are in a secret relationship. The raptured Sound manages to come back to life after listening to Chicken Soup. Back inside, Sound first sees Wynn with food and water to please him. He also resumed smiling under Wynn's offensive of begging for coaxing. He boasted that he would recreate a love song about his mood. He'll have Wynn washing his hands of it again and waiting to see what happens. Gunn spends his evenings getting worked up about songwriting. He couldn't sleep and fretted outside alone, and Tim found an opportunity to get close to him. It was beside Gunn, as he provided the contents of the various musical lines while his mind wandered. However, just as Tim was about to get a kiss, Gunn shouted in time to stop Tim. In the end, Tim was left helpless and empty-handed. On the day of her children's trip, Gunn's mother meets Tim's mother at the store who has come to buy coffee. The two chatted for a while before realizing that their children had gone to school together. In the course of a question and answer session, they almost debunked the excuses Tim had made on his outing. Luckily, Tim's mother ended the conversation because of an incoming cell phone call. In the evening, Yak led the crowd onto the stage and performed for a packed house. Sound, on the other hand, took the stage alone and performed a song he wrote himself. The lyrics are filled with feelings and thoughts about when, after the show, when found sound, he candidly stated that he truly felt Sound's affection for him in the song. Instead of rejecting his relationship with Sound, he's willing to try the relationship out. As a result, 
the relationship between the two enters a state of ambiguity that is more than a friend and less than a lover. Sun has set writing goals and started to act on them. Yet here in Gun, it still goes nowhere, even after some chanting from Yek. His confidence was completely lost. Seeing Gun in a creative rut, Tim approaches him and offers advice. He told Gun to not only think with his head, but also create with his heart. That's how you write songs that resonate with people. After a few days of separation from Tim, Gun, who has finally finished writing the song, comes to Tim's house one night. This allowed Long Son after Tim to finally meet his lover and enjoy sweet moments with each other. However, after Gun presented the song he created to the team members, Sound and Wind give feedback. They felt that although the tunes of the songs were good enough, they lacked emotion. So they suggested that Gun think again about how to make the work even better. His mother calls while Gun is at school and asks for his help to go shopping for spare parts for the store. However, as Gun still needs to attend regimental practice, Tim volunteered to take this on. Instead of Gun, he can't go shopping for goods needed by his future mother in law. However, when he delivers the item to Gun's store, Gun's mother collapsed on the ground due to health. Upon discovering this, Tim immediately rushed her to the hospital for emergency treatment. After the doctor's initial diagnosis, they believe that Gunn's mother's condition may worsen and require surgery. Considering Gunn's character, Gunn's mother asks Tim not to tell Gunn about this for the time being. As a result, Tim hides Gunn for the rest of the day. The orchestra will be competing soon. The band members, however, were concerned about the lack of supporters at the game. They decided to make their own posters and put them up around the school. When the learns of this, he immediately pointed out that the day of the competition conflicted with the master teacher's lecture. For selfish reasons, he was active in the radio classroom helping to preview the propaganda. This has enabled the members of the orchestra to succeed in gaining a large number of adoring supporters. Unable to hide the truth after all, Gunn's mother soon falls ill again and is taken to hospital. That's when Gunn realizes that Tim has been cheating on him all this time. It made him angry at Tim. However, when Dunn arrived at the hospital, instead, his mother fondly tells him what Tim has been doing all this time, and the various things he's been doing to quietly watch over Gunn. The mother instructs Gunn to never let such a wonderful man be taken away from him so easily by someone else. After hearing his mother's words, Gunn quickly realizes his mistake. He rushed out after him, looking around for Tim. When he saw Tim, who still willingly bought food after being scolded, he immediately went up to Tim and hugged him and apologized and made up. During this experience, Gunn almost lost someone important. It gave him a lot of deep insights. He translates this mood into creative emotion. Eventually, he created a song that the band members unanimously praised. Meanwhile, Tim and his partner are looking forward to the final. However, Tim's mother seems to sense the object of Tim's affection, especially when she enters Tim's room and sees the image of Gunn displayed on her phone. Her expression became complicated. Over the next few days, the members of the orchestra did a variety of team practices in addition. They also designed and began selling support clothing at this suggestion. On the day of the finals, however, Tim is slow to see Gunn at the door, seeing that the members of the band had already arrived. Only Gunn was missing. This made Tim's mood very anxious. Turns out Gunn is there because his mother's surgery day was moved up to the same day as the finale. He wanted to be with his mother until she was safe. However, his mother listens and instead urges Gunn to hurry up and get to the game. She promises she will get through the surgery and be released safely from the hospital. That way Gunn didn't miss the game and made it to the game before the last minute. He was greeted by Tim as he entered the venue. During the final awards session, the crowd waited nervously for the presenter to announce the winners. Just then, Gunn gets the good news from Tim offstage that his mother's surgery went well. It was a relief for him to finally be able to wait with the other members for the final result of the match. Gunn and others failed to win in the finals, which left Gunn emotionally drained after the tournament. In addition to not participating in clubs for a while, he also seemed distracted in class. This worries Tim a lot. The mother, who is gradually recovering after a successful operation, told him how she felt after seeing her son play. He just has to do his best and be blameless. She hopes that Gunn will be able to get over it soon, look past it all and move on. In addition to his mother's concern, Tim made a point of bringing good news to Gunn. He told Gunn about the prom show program. He tells Gunn to regroup, accept the challenge, and gather the band members again. However, it wasn't just Gunn after the race. The other members were devastated and depressed. And Gunn is on the air at the student union. He was forced to interrupt the video to leave the club's group training because he couldn't sing, as the members of the society had to leave one after another. Par, the barbecue expert in the club, was not able to taste the barbecue originally prepared especially for the reunion of the members. They came to support him when he was down. The two enjoyed a sweet solo meal in the privacy of the club. While preparing to leave, 
or accidentally sprained his foot on the way down the stairs. This led to him showing up to class the next day in a cast. He blamed the string of misfortunes on not returning his wish after a previous visit to the temple. So the band members decided to go back to the last seaside temple for poor. Gun invites Tim to go to the beach with him because he's going on vacation with the community. When a customer comes to the door, however, Gun has to hand up. He turned around and was surprised to find that the customer who came to the store was Tim's mom. Tim's mom is more interested in finding out more about the relationship between Gun and Tim than finding food. In the course of chatting with Gun, she accidentally learns that Gun wants her tin scene. She wanted to continue the conversation, but had to end it due to other customers in the store. Gun told Tim about it afterward. Both think it's just a coincidence that Tim's mother went to the bar store. Then they stopped thinking about it and started the club's outing. This payback was full of twists and turns and challenges. Due to road construction, the crowd was unable to get to the temple by car and had to climb the trail on foot. Hunger and thirst plagued the group during the climb, and there were wounded soldiers to tend to. This caused the members, whose morale was already low, to start complaining. It eventually devolved into a debating assembly of mutual accusations. Fortunately, after a heated argument, everyone quickly realized their mistake and apologized. Everyone quickly repaired their friendships and moved on. Eventually they managed to reach the temple at the top of the mountain and accomplish the goal of returning the wish. At night, Tim's mom worries that her son's sexual orientation may be holding him back in life. However, the husband listened and said that no matter what the outside world thinks of Tim, they were all going to be his strongest backers to protect him. Meanwhile, Gun's side of the family is back to its daily barbecue festivities. The seniors of the club learned that the schoolboys failed to win the competition. The seniors made special calls to comfort them and encouraged them to keep up the good work. Beyond comfort, they also sang the song that Gun and others sang to encourage them when they lost the game. This has revitalized and restored the confidence of the club mates who have watched it. After completing the payback trip, Tim accompanied Gun back to his doorstep. Tim gave Gun a special music box. He said it's okay if he can't accept his feelings right now. He will wait for Gun until he goes to college or even works in the society. Gun listens but laughs and tells Tim that he misunderstood. There is no rule that a club has to win a competition to have a date. He then said he would talk to his mother about it first. This made Tim leave for home with a happy face. Once he got home, however, he saw his mom waiting in the living room. The mother and volunteered that she wanted to talk to her son about Gun, though Tim's mom is eager to learn from her son about Tim's relationship with Gun. But on the verge of asking a question, she noticed her son's clenched hands. So she decided to give her son some more time to restrain her thoughts and change the subject. On the other hand, Gunn confesses his romantic relationship with Tim to his mother at the hospital. After hearing this, Gunn's mother smiled and expressed her support for her son's choice. His mother gave him a warm hug, making Gunn feel very touched and happy. Afterward, Gunn confesses his experience to Tim. After listening to it, Tim felt some regret. He hasn't had the courage to say it yet because he's worried that his parents might not be able to accept it. Gunn understands and agrees to have a secret relationship with Tim on campus for now under the current circumstances. The current relationship between the two is only known to Tim's friends who have been around to try to help. However, the young couple soon faced a challenge. The two were secretly photographed in an intimate manner because of a filming event. When bring sound and the others to question Gunn, after seeing the photo from a friend, seeing that paper can hold fire, Gunn decides to stop hiding from his best friend and confesses that he is dating Tim. Other members of the community were informed of this. People were not too shocked and gave their blessings. Meanwhile, the groups win, and Sound made a public announcement of their relationship in the meantime. Tim's side of the story is more complicated than the accommodating attitude around Gunn. In addition to having to deal with a lot of talk from your peers on campus, even Jordan, who was highly admired by the student body, he is also disappointed to learn that Tim became student president because of Gunn. He thinks Tim is too focused on the music club and not doing his job. Jorn then threatens to quit the club, leaving Tim and the feeling helpless. After Jorn leaves in a hurry, Gunn is outside and hears movement in the student union. For Tim's sake, he decided to sacrifice and dedicate himself. He published a clarifying article on an online platform and deliberately distanced himself from Tim on campus. Yet such behavior is heartbreaking to Tim. He finally decides to protect his hard-won relationship with Gunn against all odds. As Tim and Gunn face the pressure of rumors, my mother, who is a principal, has also seen messages in the group about complaints from parents and mentors. This puts her in a difficult decision between her workplace and her family. On the other hand, Jor comes to the student union to pack up his things shortly after he offers to quit the club. He sees it and also offers one last dissuasion, hoping that Jorn will think about it, as Tim only been privy to the music club for so long in his tenure. Tim and Gunn's romance soon spreads throughout the school. This incident made the lovers feel warm and fuzzy after seeing everyone's kindness. 
There are some staff members in the school whose behavior doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. They made some discriminatory remarks about Gunn while talking to people behind his back. He even went further and further, going so far as to involve Tim's mother. Just when Tim couldn't stand it anymore and decided to go up and teach Mr. Mo a lesson, Joran, who overhears the conversation, but steps forward and punches the teacher in the face. Afterwards, Mr. Mo brought the three to the principal's office because of the beating. It was intended that the three would be severely punished, but who knows Tim's mother after hearing what happened. She only let the hands on Joran do the review. She also warned Mr. So-and-so not to defame her son in public, otherwise she won't let him go. Tim's mother also apologized to her son afterward. She states that she didn't do it, giving Tim the courage to be willing to open up to him about it. After the storm, Gunn quickly rushes to the opening act of the prom. The two, who had the support of both parents, were more generous in showing their affection at the event. Gunn also dragged him on stage with him to announce their romance as they sang their love song for him. Their mother, who is the principal of the school, also cheered for them from the stage, and it was a very warm and joyful scene. After prom, the group celebrated the last day of their high school careers. Not only has Jor not left the student council, he is ready to take over Tim's job and continue to fight hard. When and sound, the couple, on the other hand, were writing blessings on each other's clothes when they did. The duo also kissed each other deeply. They was also forced to come up and offered to take a picture when he took everyone's graduation picture. This leaves fat, the only member of the band who has watched the members take off one by one. In tears, Tim arrives at the promised poolside to meet his date, and they to reminisce about the moments when they met. They rode on each other's backs and the official announcement was made. Gunn also had a final team practice, singing session with the band members afterward. Amidst laughter and tears, we all officially said goodbye to the club we had stayed in for three years. After graduation, Gunn came to Tim's house as a guest. The weather was very unlucky that day with a torrential downpour, which prevented Gunn from getting home. Luckily, Tim's father took it upon himself to help Gunn secure the opportunity for them to spend time together. On this day of universal celebration, Tim and Gunn finally got their wish and kissed happily.